Okay, so uh, today we are going to use quadratic techniques to solve polynomial equations. So up to this point, uh, we've kind of found the answers to polynomial equations um, kind of by analyzing charts, by using synthetic substitution and combining that with the fundamental theorem of algebra, Descartes' rule of signs, uh, the complex conjugate theorem, the rational root theorem. We've used kind of ways of narrowing down our search, but we still haven't had an actual way of solving problems. And not every polynomial equation can be solved like this, but uh, some of them can if they happen to fit a certain mold. Um, and <coughs> basically, they have to be able to be manipulated into looking like a quadratic. Right, so a quadratic is a second degree equation, and we're really good at solving those. Right, Quadratics we can solve by factoring, by completing the square, or a quadratic formula. So, so here's a problem. This is actually from last night's homework. We found the answers to it uh, using right, synthetic substitution and all those narrowing down techniques and you know, searching and guessing and checking. Um, but now it turns out this problem, I think we could imagine as being a quadratic. All right? Now, this is what I mean by that. I'm saying, what if we pretend, right? You have to use your imagination. What if this was something squared minus 13 times something plus 36? All right, so I want to imagine it as a quadratic, right? A quadratic is a second degree polynomial. Um, so, if I imagined it as a quadratic, what would have to go in those parentheses to make it equal to the equation above it? X squared. Yeah, right? If I fit an x squared in here and an x squared in here, right? x squared squared is the same as x to the fourth. So, this is what we're going to do. We're going to define our own variable. We're making it up, all right? that we'll call uh, x squared. So I'll say variable u is x squared. You can name it whatever letter you want, right? So I could name it w for wadi, or you could name it after yourself, right? Whatever, whatever works. Um, but we're going to define u as being this x squared piece, all right? And now I'm going to substitute u <coughs> into the original equation. So I'll have... Uh, Let's see, so I'll have u squared minus 13u plus 36. And if I wanted to solve this, if this was right, being set equal to 0, this is now an equation we do know how to solve, right? Because it's a quadratic. So how could I solve this equation for u? How could I solve this for you, right? Uh, yeah, I get it, I get it. Right, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Uh, so what, what attempts should we try? What should we do? You could try completing the square. Uh, it'd be a little bit ugly because we'd have to divide the, an odd number by 2 and squaring it at some point, We're making fractions. Um, I think this one is factorable uh, because I remembered what the answers were from last night's problem. Uh, but, uh, so you could f try factoring it. You could try, you know, any of the methods. Let's try factoring it. So we'll have 1 and 36... Uh, 2 and 18, 3 and 12, 4 and 9, and 6 and 6. And notice I don't have to do AC method in this case, all right, which is not the case for all of these kinds of problems, but at least for this one, um, simply because the leading term is, right, got a positive 1 coefficient. So let's see. So I'm looking for the factors of C that add to be 13. Uh, nope, nope. Nope. Yep. Right there. Right? So I can factor this to be u with a 4 and u with a 9 equals 0. And what are the signs in this going to be? Negative. Right? Double negative. And now what do I do? Can't you set them both equal to 0? Yeah, right. I've got two things that are equal to zero, therefore, or two things that multiply to be zero. 
therefore one of them has got to be zero. So I'll get u equals four and u equals nine. Now, it's a temptation to be like, box them, right? Box it and ship it, right? We're done, but we're not, right? Because this would be like if someone asked us, hey, could you solve this equation for x? And you're like, sure, I'll tell you what, u is four and u is nine. And they're like, what did u come from? Like, I asked you to solve for x, right? But we made up the u, so that's something that we did. Uh, so we haven't answered this question yet. However, notice, now that I know what u is, or u are, hmm, well, English on that's a little funny. Uh, I can plug in x squared back in for u. So then you root Yeah, right? So I, I solved it in a form that was easy for us. And now I can plug it back in and solve for the original variable. So I can root root both sides, plus or minus, don't forget it. Root, root both sides, plus or minus, don't forget it. And I will get x equals plus or minus 2. And x equals plus or minus 3. So what are your guys' thoughts on this? Yeah, yeah it is. It's easier since it actually works out. Um, but it, it will only work in certain situations. Uh, typically, you need a quadra like a three-term trinomial, right? Uh, and it needs to be able to be rewritten as a quadratic. Uh, so not in every scenario would this work. But fortunately, um, like most math, most math books, when they teach you something, then those types of problems all show up in that section. So you can be pretty sure that tonight's homework can all be done with this method. Right? So it's like coincidentally, it's like when you buy a car and then you see that car everywhere you drive, you're like, oh, they have that car too. There's another one, right? It's that sort of thing, except in this case, it was pre-planned, right? They're not going to teach you something and then, like, hide a bunch of other kinds of problems in the homework that night. That would be weird. Um, but, yeah, so that's the idea, is you imagine it as a quadratic. You use your quadratic techni techniques to solve, and then just bring it back to what the original problem said, right? So I, I kind of like these. I like these. Uh, so let's see. Let's do another one. So let's solve... I, didn't, I noticed I didn't write instructions on the previous problem. Uh, let's solve. Uh, how about one of these? Oh, I like this. x to the 1 half minus 8x to the 1 fourth uh, plus 15 equals zero. Hmm. This one's a little bit weirder. But once again, our objective will be the same. Can you pretend, right, something all squared minus eight times <coughs> that same something plus 15 equals zeros? So can we pretend this looks like a quadratic, right? That's, that's what our goal is. And now I didn't show you this trick earlier, but it turns out that when we do this pretending, oftentimes the middle terms variable will be the thing that we need. All right, so check this out. So I'm saying likely what goes in these parentheses will be the x to the one-fourth. And does that actually make sense if I plug in x to the one-fourth here? All right, x to the one-fourth squared, how would you even simplify that, guys? Well, you'd multiply, right? Yeah. And what's two times a fourth? A half. A half, right? So this is, in fact, equivalent to the statement above. So let's see. So now we'll define our own variable. So we'll say u is equal to x to the one-fourth. And now I can just kind of plug in u in this expression here. Uh, so let's do that. So we'll have u squared minus 8u plus 15 equals zero, right? And let's solve this for you. Uh, this one looks factorable again, I'm guessing. 
Um, well, tell you what, I'm going to do completing the square. This one's got a nice even middle term. Just to practice, why not? Right? So I'll have uh, u squared minus 8u uh, blank equals negative 15 blank. All right. And uh, to complete the square, I'll take negative 8, divide by 2, and square it to find my new c term. So that's negative 4 all squared is 16. So I'll add 16 here. I'll add 16 there. Right? Because completing the square is a quadratic technique of solving. Right? So that's why the name of this section is solving using quadratic techniques. Um, so let's see. What is this fast factor to on the left? Right, so x minus 4 all squared. And then I can solve by root rooting both sides. Oh, thank you. Yep, good call. I, I'm so used to using x's. Uh, x's and y's are like my favorite variables. Uh, so yeah, good call. So that's still u, that's not x yet. And then root root both sides, plus or minus, don't forget it. I'll get u minus 4 equals plus or minus 1, right? If I add 4 to both sides, I will get u equals, and I get two answers. 4 plus 1 is 5, and 4 minus 1 is 3. And now we just have to uh, plug in our uh, original u here, or what u is equal to, right? So this is x to the 1 fourth. So I'm going to bring this all the way back in and solve it for the original variable we were interested in, right? So, so I get x to the 1 fourth equals 5, and x to the 1 fourth equals 3. And uh, how would I solve those equations? You, I mean, you kind of could. Well, okay, so I guess, well, I could rewrite this as the fourth root of x equals 5. That might be easier for people uh, to see. And now, how would you get x by itself here? What, what kills a fourth root? Yeah, raise it to the fourth on both sides. And technically, even if you didn't do the rewrite as a radical, you also could have done that here, right? One fourth to the four is one, so that would still give me x to the fourth. So I could have done that without writing it. But uh, I think we are more familiar with it in a radical form there. So let's see, five to the fourth, I believe, is 625. And three to the fourth, I believe, is 81. And uh, so those are my answers. In this case, wait a minute. Hmm. Well, actually, our... A regular analysis wouldn't work. I mean, if I was trying to use the uh, fundamental theorem of algebra, I'd be like, so there's half an answer to this, right, if I was trying to interpret it based on its degree. Fundamental theorem of algebra only works for integers uh, as the exponents there. Um, but one thing I do have to be aware of is that this half exponent is technically, uh, that's like the same as the square root of x, and this is the same as like the fourth root of x. And whenever we had um, radicals, solving radical equations, which we did a long time ago, uh, it was possible to have extraneous solutions uh, a little bit more frequently. So technically, I would have to do a check with these to make sure that they weren't extraneous. So I'd have to check them in the original problem. But uh, for sake of time, I'm not going to do that right now. I want to um, do one more type of problem. Uh, just the setup anyway. Are they going to have problems like the one we just did? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Oh yeah. Right. So it's it's the the general strategy is the same. Can we imagine it as a quadratic? What would our new variable be? We'll solve for that new variable and then plug it back in to solve for the original. So let's say uh, I'll just summarize this. Rewrite as a quadratic. All right. So we won't actually solve this fully just for sake of time, so we can get some practice in. Uh, so let's rewrite the following as a quadratic. What if I've got the um, cube root of x squared uh, minus, let's say, 6 cubed roots of x, and let's say uh, plus 8 equals 0. And I wanted to solve this. So what are our thoughts? How could I imagine this as a quadratic? Well, you want to, wouldn't you want to put it back into a simpler form, like the way we just had it to begin with? And like, like, we did a fraction instead of the radicals? Uh, you could rewrite this as um, x to the 2 thirds and x to the 1 third here, if that helps. But we also could leave them in radical form. It wouldn't be wrong. Um, so yeah, you wouldn't be wrong for that approach. That's fine. So one third x, or x to the one third. Mm -hmm. Yeah, x to the one third would fit in both of these, or right. That's just the cube root of x. So either of those uh, interpretations are fine. Um, and like I said, oftentimes the thing we're looking for will just always happen to be our middle terms variable, right? Uh, so yeah. And then, yeah, we'd be able to solve from there where I'd say, oh, u is equal to the cube root of x, uh, right? And, and be able to solve for u and uh, be able to plug that cube root of x back in at the very end. All right? Well, yeah, I'm, I was just having us part do a problem. But if I actually wanted to finish solving it, I would then plug it in as u and, and do all the work out. But I think I'd rather have us get some, uh, some compañero... Uh, Trabajar done? I don't know. Well, anyways, so I'm a math teacher, not a Spanish work teacher. Or to work. You yeah. Trabajar Traba to work. Trabajo, I guess, is the I noun work. work as well, though, I think, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. But anyways, all right, so, uh, so that's the video for today. Uh, so that was solving, quad, uh, solving polynomials using quadratic techniques. Excellent.